All right. Uh, now that we're still in this chapter or section of uh, arbitrary sources, instead of just having the electric and magnetic dipoles, we get another fun question. Here we see that an insulating circular ring of radius B lies in the XY plane, centered at the origin. It carries a linear charge density lambda equal lambda naught sine phi, where lambda naught is a constant and phi is the usual azimuthal angle. The ring is now set spinning at a constant angular velocity omega along the z-axis. Okay, so calculate the power radiated. And what we see here is that the power radiated, we're still using the same formula for last time. That's just mu naught over 6 pi c, the double derivative, double time derivative, evaluate at t naught, uh, squared. Um, so let's see what we have. As it rotates, counterclockwise it is, we see that we have the uh, same as the rotating dipole, similar setup anyways. Um, here, we see that we have it parameterized where we have uh, cosine on the y and negative sine on, for the x hat. But again, since we're taking a double time derivative, that's kind of irrelevant here. So we got to be careful with that because what we're moving along is that we get the double, we get the negative omega naught from the chain rule. And then if we square that, we just get P naught, thanks to the fact that sine squared, cosine squared, add together to one, uh, and omega to the fourth. And then at P to the, at T equals zero, the dipole moment of the ring is, well, here we have to be very careful because we have P naught is equal to lambda R, since lambda is the charge, that's our Q, and the separation distance is the radius, that's our D, over DL. Okay, since we're going through a circle, our, the whole is mutual angle, we go from 0 to 2 pi. But our dl has to be the circumference of that, so that's where we get the radius b, d phi. Okay, let's go back to our line integrals if you don't uh, remember that part. Now, lambda is equal to lambda naught sine phi. Okay, but our radius depended on, was depending on the uh, parameterization for x and y specifically. So that's where we get B sine uh, phi y hat and then plus B cosine phi x hat. Again, just the normal stuff we see in the xy plane. Uh, we have to be careful now because we have to treat each component as its own integral. Just integrate across. Just make sure you keep the x and y together. What we see is that when we distribute the sine phi from the lambda, we get y hat is sine squared and x hat is sine cosine. Uh, but we know that since... Uh, in our integrals, that sine, cosine leads to zero. So in our next step, that's where the zero x hat comes from. And then, you know, sine squared, we just are left with a uh, pi. So let it work itself through. You see we get a pi lambda naught b squared over uh, b squared in the y hat direction, which kind of looks like the, uh, which kind of looks like a uh, magnetic moment with the area involved. So our power radiated is mu naught over 6 pi c times p naught uh, squared, since that's what we found from the double derivative and the omega, square, omega to the fourth. Clearly then we see once we uh, divvy out that square and square every term, a factor of pi cancels, and we are left with a mu naught, p, uh, mu naught pi lambda squared b to the fourth, omega to the fourth over 6 c. Okay. Not too bad. I would say that the only thing we need to be careful of is finding, uh, first parameterizing that dipole as for the rotating uh, circle, and then finding p naught at time t equals zero. Uh, that just required an integral. Again, much simpler than what we've seen before, but be careful, as always.